All right, folks. Today's Reddit story comes from the lovely world of r slash petty revenge, where OP, like many of us have, is struggling with the toxicity of a bullying boss who steals their work and makes their life hell, but manages to get sweet, sweet revenge. All righty, let's dive in. Petty Revenge in a Law Firm, posted by Called in the 90s. This opinion is crap, my boss told me. He'd been a lawyer for three years, and the firm assigned me to him for training to show me, a humble articling student, how to be a litigator. I'm from Canada, and here a law student has to train for about a year after they graduate before they can become a lawyer. The process is called articling. I'll also add that this was many, many years ago before the internet blew up. I disliked my boss for a number of reasons. He knew no law, and he expressed himself badly in writing. For a litigator, that's like strike one and two right there, and strike three was this. He had no balls. He was actually scared of going to court. I noticed this when he took me to assignment court one day, and when it was his turn to speak, his hands were shaking. He was scared. In freaking assignment court, where all you do is set a trial date. What's wrong with what I wrote? I said. Not what I asked for, he said, turning away. But when I checked the memo he'd emailed me two weeks earlier, I saw that the opinion I wrote was exactly what he asked for. I knew what was up. He was going to delete my dockets for writing the memo and then claim he did it himself, thus leaving me quite a bit short of my docketing quota for the month. I knew that he would do this to me because he'd done this before. I knew that my memo would wind up on a partner's desk without my name on it. I knew that for a fact because the firm I worked at was one of the first in the city to have a really good internal network. We were using email for internal communications before the internet became a thing. So the firm was way ahead in terms of technology, but not in terms of security. And not long after I joined the firm, I learned how to surf away on the firm's hard drive and find interesting things, like evidence that my boss was plagiarizing my work. My boss was the perfect model of the young downtown lawyer. His perfect shoes always gleamed. He wore bespoke suits because he came from money. Everyone just took it for granted that he was on the partner track. I, on the other hand, was well on my way to not being hired back, so maybe he thought it was okay to mess with me. If so, that was a big mistake on his part, because although he didn't know it yet, I was the articling student from hell. I didn't like having my billable hours messed with. I seriously resented it because I was already being targeted as one of the students who doesn't dock it as much as he should, and I was getting pushback from the partner who headed our team. I told the partner what was going on, but he didn't care. It was like being back in middle school and showing up in the office with bruises on my face and the principal saying boys will be boys and sending me on my way. You'll just have to work harder or smarter. The partner said when I reported the latest BS thing my boss did to me. I couldn't work harder. I was doing the usual six days a week crap that students downtown are forced to do. But I could work smarter and that night I thought up a plan. Christmas was coming and I thought I'd give my boss a little present. It landed on his desk on December 24th, in the form of a memo purporting to be from the partner that my boss reported to. The partner was an old guy and not really on board with emails and computers, so he did everything old school on paper. So when my boss came in on December 24th and saw a memo on his desk from the partner with a legal research assignment, that wasn't unusual. The memo was drafted in the usual form that the partner used because, of course, I had taken great pains to make sure that it looked authentic. My boss walked over to the little cubicles where the students worked and gave me the same memo, except his secretary had retyped it, so now the assignment was from him to me instead of from the partner to my boss. The assignment was difficult, requiring me to do a deep dive into admiralty law, its relationship to the common law, combined with a constitutional division of powers question. But this is a huge assignment, I whined, and I'm going to be away. Can't you get someone else to do it? Is it really urgent? The memo I'd forged to my boss stressed how totally urgent the situation was. But there was no way my boss could double check with the partner because the partner left the day before on vacation. That's why I'd waited until December 24th. No can do, my boss said. This is a big deal. Just let HR know. Maybe they'll give you time and half or something. He turned his back and walked away, thinking he had ruined my holidays. But he was mistaken. You see, I'd written a paper for a third-year course that was basically the same thing as the research assignment in the memo. So the only work I had to do was to find the old floppy disk with the draft on it, fiddle with it a bit, and voila, 
a very detailed and very long memo on an obscure point of admiralty law with references starting back to Lord Coke's day. So I put the memo together and took my holidays as planned. I wasn't traveling anywhere because I had no money, but I saw my family and stayed in town and I made a point of dropping by the office during the holidays, sending an email or two establishing that I was around and docketing all my time for the huge amount of research I was allegedly doing. So the holidays end and I'm sitting in my crappy little student's cubicle with a huge stack of work to do and my boss comes up to me in one of his bespoke suits with a gold tie pin and cufflinks to match. He was wearing a gold watch too. He was dressed up, even for him, trying to make an impression of some kind. Where's that memo? You were supposed to have it on my desk when I got back. I'm going into a meeting at noon. Just finished it this morning, I said, handing him the lengthy memo that was still warm from the printer. My boss took the memo in his hands and felt its heft and he smiled. Then he turned and walked away without a word. Just before lunch, I heard a commotion down the hall. It was a pretty loud commotion as such things go, a loud F! And then a door was flung open. It was the partner, and he was screaming for my boss to get his ass into his office. Now, right now, as in immediately. I had the pleasure of watching my boss scramble down the hall. Just what the freaking F is this? The partner said, standing in the doorway to his office and holding my handiwork with his thumb and index finger as if he were afraid that handling it would soil him. My boss mumbled something, and then the partner ushered him inside. I heard more shouting, then the sound of muffled excuses and then more shouting from the partner. Then the door flung open again. OP, get your ass in here too, the partner said, and I got my ass in there pronto. Did you write this freaking memo, the partner said. I took it from him and looked it over. I wrote it. The cover page has been changed to remove my name, but other than that, it's mine. I spent all Christmas on it. Is there something wrong with it? The partner exploded. Is there something wrong with it? Something wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's freaking useless. Totally useless. I explained that I'd followed my boss's instructions to the letter and that I'd docketed more than a hundred hours on it. At this, the partner really went nuts and told me to go back to my desk and fetch him the memo from my boss. I brought it to him and when he read it, his face went red. He told me I could leave and I hauled ass out of there. From my little student cubicle, I wasn't close enough to hear the full chewing out my boss got but I heard the details through the grapevine over the next few days about how the partners were seriously pissed that my boss had wasted over a hundred hours of a student's time on a useless task that was obviously a prank, and my boss had not realized that he was being pranked and how much of an idiot he was. I wasn't blamed at all, of course. I had been working under my boss's close supervision. My boss didn't get fired, but there were some good outcomes for me. For one thing, the partner told me to send him a copy of any memos I wrote for my boss and that ended him taking credit for my work. Plus, I got a belated Christmas bonus for having to give up on my alleged vacation to write the stupid memo. I really hated my articling year, but whenever times were tough, I'd think back to the case of the forged memo, and that always brought a smile to my face. This could easily be a storyline in a Netflix series. The articling student from hell? More like the articling student who just figured out how to play the game. Talk about getting your comeuppance. This story, see... It's incredible how far some people will go to steal credit and sabotage others. It's as if the boss had a PhD in douchebaggery. The boss is scared of court, can't write for squat, and steals other people's work. I mean, if that's the fast track to becoming a partner, then I am the Queen of England. Honestly, the audacity of this dude. Stealing dockets, claiming others' work, being a certified jerk, and all that with the finesse of a drunk hippo on a tightrope. The brilliant part about this tale is how our articling student manages to serve justice on a silver platter. Nothing too crazy, nothing that'll land them in jail, but just a perfectly crafted petty revenge plan. The way they dug up their old law school paper, rewrote it to fit the sham assignment, and then watched their boss flail around like a fish out of water, it's nothing short of poetic. Remember, kids, being smart doesn't necessarily mean you're wise. And our dear boss learned this lesson the hard way. I'm sure the next time he tries to throw someone under the bus, he'll remember the case of the forged memo. But honestly, what a way to ring in the new year. If you're going to serve a dish of karma, make sure it's a hefty one. This was a true masterclass in how to deal with workplace bullies. So here's to all the articling students, the interns, the trainees, anyone who's ever had their work stolen or been made to feel small by some power-tripping boss. This story is for you. Hey, wait! 
Before you go off chasing after your next internet rabbit hole, give that like button a quick little smack. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous today, why not dance with the subscribe button? Join our band of misfits here and let's share the laughter. Anyways, stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.